Theresa May said the UK cannot possibly remain within the European single market as that would mean not leaving the EU at all. Some feel this tough talking by the Prime Minister could be a response to American President Donald Trump's hostile comments about the EU and its positive remarks about a post-Brexit US-UK trade deal. However, commentators have warned the British Prime Minister not to put all her faith in the US because the deal might not be as attractive as she thinks. Sir Andrew Kahn, who advised on setting up the single market in the 1980s, warned of the difficulties of negotiating a trade deal with Donald Trump, stating, The implacable truth of trade deal negotiations is that if you want something, you have to pay for it. Sir Andrew added, The smaller negotiating partner pays more and gives more than the larger negotiating partner and it takes a long time, five to ten years. Meanwhile, newly appointed President Trump has suggested the UK is doing great and would get a great deal. In his first interview about the UK, with former Justice Secretary Michael Gove representing the Times newspaper, Mr Trump said he thought the UK was so smart in getting out and promised a quick trade deal between the US and UK. By contrast, outgoing President Obama said in April 2016 that the UK would be at the back of the queue if it left the EU. What type of trade deal will Donald Trump offer the UK? And is this the beginning of the end for the European Union? Simple questions with important answers. How does the public feel about Theresa May's promise to take the UK out of the single market? We asked them. Well, I'm the Remainer, so I'm not very happy about that. Why not? Well, because I think our future should be within Europe, not outside of Europe. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because once we've signed up for Brexit, we don't really have many cards to play with. I mean, surely... She may as well go for that in the first instance, because I don't think Europe's going to budge otherwise. I think it's realistic, I suppose. It's not something that I personally <laughs> would have gone for, but once you've kind of made that decision and take the plunge, what are you going to do? It does break my heart slightly, because I worry for business in this country, but I don't think she had many options, to be honest. Um, I think that's fair enough, actually. I think it's important not to be constrained by all the kind of the rules and regulations that are surrounding that, and I think it will give us um, you know, more freedom, actually, in terms of trade uh, and to be able to take care of our own business. Well, I don't think she had any uh, choice. At the end of the day, um, you know, with leaving Brexit, she had to honour what the people said, and I think that's just part and parcel of the, of the deal that she left to do. Um, I think it's a promise she's got to uphold because the people voted for it. I think it's a very good idea. I think it would be uh, not very good for the British people and not very good for the European uh, Union either. Well, as an American citizen, I can only speak from a distance, but I, I think that's up to the British people. I think it's a risky move, but, you know, if the people voted for it, then they have to uh, go along with it, I suspect. Well, I don't believe that Theresa May has much flexibility on this matter. If she doesn't withdraw Britain from the single market, then the right wing of her party, the Conservative Party, could cause serious problems for her. There could be a very, very nasty backlash for the Prime Minister from her own party, which of course could destabilise her premiership and of course could bring her down. And then she's up against the media, which is overwhelmingly right wing and which wants to see Britain completely out of the European Union, which of course means the single market as well. So while I don't personally believe that Theresa May is unsympathetic to the notion of Britain being in the single market, I don't think there is much she can do with this, on this matter. To be honest with you, I feel very bad. Um, because based on a lot of things, uh, as you know and many people in this country know, that um, referendum based on a lot of lies and prejudice. Um, so um, we we actually um, everybody feels nowadays, particularly things that are, you know, we are caught between two um, 
front one in America, what's going on in America nowadays, and what's already happening in Europe by the right-wing parties. And it's like uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of things that are, not, are clear that Theresa May and politicians in this country need to, to be clear about. Does the public have faith that Theresa May will do what is best for Britain in her Brexit negotiations? I think she will. Well, I think she's quite a competent Prime Minister. She comes across very well. And given the fact that uh, democracy rules and we are leaving, then I'm quite sure she'll do a good job for us. That needs to be tempered. But certainly there's a lot of rhetoric from Theresa May at the moment, uh, supporting the people and allowing it to be... I don't know... There might be elements driving her that she needs to listen to everybody. Probably more than any of the other candidates that were standing up for the post. I think she's probably the best that we've got. It's a very difficult task, though, isn't it? There is so much to do, so much riding on it. Are Europe going to make an example out of the UK? Well, I would understand if they tried to. I think she's tough, and I think she's fair, and I think she's measured. And I think now that she's there doing the job, all that we can do is go, all right, then, go on. Yeah, I think she will. I don't think she's there to make up the numbers. I think she's there with a clear mandate of the people and I get the impression that she's uh, both personally and professionally somebody that can deliver that. She, she will definitely want to do the best for the people of Britain. Uh, she's in the, the, in the role that she's in and I think she will do very well. I, th I think it's her duty to do so. I hope she will, but so long as she takes into account the interests of all those people who voted against uh, Brexit. Theresa May is an exceptionally hard-working politician. In fact, she's one of the most hard-working MPs that you can come across. However, we do have to consider the possibility that she will take decisions which ultimately will serve her own premiership. And we can draw a comparison with David Cameron. David Cameron, during the Scottish referendum campaign, argued that he puts country first and party second. However, he chose to hold uh, a referendum on the European Union for Conservative Party reasons, i.e. to prevent, to stop the hemorrhaging of support from the Conservative Party to UKIP. So David Cameron, in that situation, put party first, country second. And I do not believe it's inconceivable that Theresa May will do something very similar. Ultimately, she does not want to fall from power. And if that means taking decisions which benefit more so the party as opposed to Britain, then I suspect she will do that, as what a lot of politicians would do. I don't, I don't whatsoever, you know, believe uh, she is uh, going to do what's the best of the Britain. And uh, because, as I said, uh, uh, a lot of questions to be answered. In her speech, uh, she she's not clear about her plans and, and what's going to happen to take this country out of Europe. Now that Donald Trump is president, are people in Britain confident about the prospects for post-Brexit Britain? I believe that Trump is probably kindly disposed towards the UK more than Barack Obama was. Um, I'm a bit concerned about his view, America first, America first, but I think if there's an opportunity to deal with him, we stand a better chance with this administration than the last one. He's pro-America, pro-American industry, how that relates to trade negotiations with us. You've got to remember, if you're going to negotiate in trade, there is a process. You have to look at all our uh, friends in Europe who might have different agreements or there's a, there's a period you have to make a trade negotiation. You don't just go in a boardroom, stand up, slam your fist on the table, let's do business. It doesn't work like that. Uh, he will hopefully be getting advised it doesn't work like that. But I don't see the benefit because most of our trade is with Europe and it dwarfs what we trade we do in America. I know there's investment from America, but trade-wise, Europe's a bigger player than America will ever be. Uh, so he'll know that, and he's also a protectionist. Whether that works in our favour, I don't know. My gut is to say, less confident, Trump's in charge, what? Um, but you never know, and again, I think you've just got to have faith that he has said... And now I know he's retracted and, you know, he said things before and then unsaid them. He has said he's happy to work with the UK, so it could be a good thing. But I caveat that because it's Donald Trump we're talking about here. 
Um, I think the Trump question is a really interesting one. I am worried about it. Um, but I just think there's more to it than behind the scenes. I think there's, he will have to quickly learn that he's, he, although he's got power on his own, there are a team of people around him, and I think he needs to have a global perspective. I'm not so worried that it'll impact Brexit. Um, you know, Trump, Trump is powerful, but he's not the only main, he's not the only guy on the block, as it were, in, in play. Sure, I think, uh, I think the short term it's been a little bit damaging, but I think in the long term it'll be a good thing. I, I think that um, to have Trump on board... Um, is a change because he's a businessman and we're looking for all economies to actually grow in scale. So I think instead of a politician who have been quite untrustworthy for many, many uh, generations, it would be interesting to see how a businessman deals with that. I'm very disappointed by the election of Donald Trump and, and I don't have high expectations that he will do a good job. So it's very doubtful and it's very... Um, uh, it's very unsettling to have a president like this man. We just, I, I don't trust him at all. So I'm very, I don't know what the future holds for him and our country. Very, I'm very concerned. Well, I don't think we can really judge uh, Donald Trump at the moment. He has only just become president, and we need to give him time to see what sort of leader he's going to be. In fact, I think we can say that... Donald Trump is uncertain about what sort of president he's going to be. It's not very clear what his policies are on a number of matters. Now, in regard to uh, Britain and uh, a Britain which is post-Brexit, we really just have to wait and see. Of course, the Prime Minister uh, will, be recently, will, will recently meet uh, with Donald Trump and we have to see what the contents of that meeting is. But at the moment, it's uh, very difficult uh, to tell because, of course, uh, Donald Trump is an unknown quantity and he is a maverick. And so we just have to uh, give him time to settle into the White House and then we can judge the situation then. No, not at all. Because uh, many of uh, what we are, we are seeing uh, and what we heard from Donald Trump uh, in your uh, speech, uh, m most of his speech actually based on a lot of um, chauvinism and prejudice, and I don't think he's going to de to have a good deal with uh, Donald Trump, because even he's the the guy who's, you know, um, full of many many um, um, contradictions, if you want to say that, and uh, he's. Um, uh, whatever he's going to uh, deal is going to with uh, Mr. Donald is going to have in his uh, in his interest in his uh, interest because he was saying that uh, everything is going to be America first. So uh, I don't believe. Donald Trump has spoken a lot about migration from the EU to the UK, net migration to the United Kingdom in the year ending June 2016 was 335,000. Of these, 189,000 came from the European Union and 146,000 from outside the EU. This was a major issue in the debate on whether the UK should leave the European Union. Donald Trump has predicted that Brexit is only the start, that it will cause a domino effect and other countries will also leave the European Union. What are the public's thoughts on the effects of Brexit on the rest of the EU? Well, I don't see how it can't affect it, given we're such a major contributor to the European process, both financially and, and in terms of uh, policy. So I think that uh, the next 12 months will be very interesting, given the elections in Germany and France. Well, I, I go to Italy a lot, and everyone over there is quite shocked that we've left. And although the Italians generally scathing about their own governments, are quite happy about the EU. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't see that personally, but it is in America's and Trump's interest to split the EU because, as I, I alluded to earlier, it's a massive trade block that they have trouble competing with. Yeah, I think it's certainly a wake-up call. Um, I think others are going to start to look uh, at their own situation and see what it is. It, it certainly weakens the EU, and I think it may well be a domino effect, certainly with some countries. 
uh, it's a brave new world we're entering into. Um, but actually, you know, the will of the people have spoken, and that's ultimately what's the biggest problem with the EU. Really, is it's about unelected people doing um, stuff that are, you know um, people are, people are unhappy with. I think people need to take note of that. I think the EU has got problems anyway. Uh, prior to Brexit, and I think they have their own internal um, government um, regulated problems. So from that, it's no actual change, and you can't use Brexit as an excuse. Well, the Brexit will affect the EU by us being a better country in the sense that we'll be able to do our marketing around the world instead of just with 27 countries. Now, there are 500 mil million people in Europe. In actual fact, there's 900 million, but we only deal with 500. There are 9 billion people in the world. Why are we not dealing with them? I don't think Brexit's a good thing for Europe, but it might... Uh uh, cause them to reform and uh, in some ways might uh, encourage people to uh, other European countries to come together more so it will have the opposite effect to what Trump. That's a good question. I, I don't know. It, it, it's a sort of a domino theory. If you knock one over, they all go over. Uh, I, I don't know. I think economically, though, it's very risky because Britain and, and Germany are two largest economies in Brexit, I mean, in, in the EU. So it's, it should have an impact on all those smaller countries, I would, I would imagine. I believe the European Union is a lot stronger than what some people realise. Yes, there is discontent amongst ordinary people within the bloc, but that discontent does not necessarily translate into those people wanting their country to pull out of the European Union. So I do not believe that the European Union is going to collapse. Is there the possibility that another member or another two members could vote to leave? Yes, I think we have to look at the Netherlands, the Netherlands perhaps. We need to look at Denmark, perhaps. But apart from those two, there is no indication, or certainly no indication at the moment, that other countries are going to follow in the footsteps of Britain. And certainly the population of Germany and France, which are the two most important countries within the European Union, are very, very clear in their opinion that the European Union should remain together, it should be reformed, and that uh, any challenges, any threats to the future of the European Union should be met. Well, this thing has been going for a while, even before his uh, campaign starts, uh, and I think he was right about that point. And uh, we are already seeing uh, a, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, campaigns, similar campaigns going, which already has been going in Norway, uh, where um, a lot of um, national movements uh, wanting to split from the Europe uh, as well. And also, um, we've seen uh, in, three days ago when the the summit, which uh, national parties, European national parties, were gathering in uh, in Germany, um, is including one of the far, uh, far right wings of Europe, uh, including um, the candidate of president candidate of French, uh, uh, Marie Le Pen. Uh, so we are really, which uh, we are really facing a new wave, a new um, a new world, as she said. She said that we are um, we we are starting a new uh, a new world. A new world is going to come, uh, and the nation states uh, is coming to Europe again. Uh, on the other side of the world, also we are seeing that the uh, the Arab Spring, uh, the wars that has been going in Libya or in Iran or uh, Iraq, uh, and also in Syria. So we are seeing new changes in the world. The world is becoming a new world. And I think Donald Trump, what, what he was saying is that the, uh, his uh, presidency uh, coming to the, the White House uh, is uh, it's going to happen somewhere else. And that's what we are seeing now in Europe. Yeah. Donald Trump has promised a fantastic trade deal with Britain once the UK officially leaves the EU. What type of deal will that be? And who will benefit the most? We asked the public. I would have thought Donald Trump would benefit the most given his position, so we'll just have to wait and see. America will always benefit America. And we've, 
we, in the past, we've also we don't want to be military poodles of America, which has happened in the past. And uh, but we could be an economic poodle of America. <laughs> it's a difficult one. Trump has promised lots of fantastic things. He's also promised more jobs for America. But if you analyse that, a lot of those jobs that have gone abroad are now automated anyway. So I don't take that as read that it would be a fantastic deal. I don't really know what it would look like, actually. Uh, maybe I don't have enough knowledge on that one, but I don't know what goods and services we would, in fact, exchange. It's kind of back to the drawing board, isn't it? Um, and what was the last part of the question? Who would benefit the most from that deal? Well, if Trump's got anything to do with it, and if you listen to his inauguration speech, Trump, he's all about America, he's all about their interests and not ours. So if he's in charge, what hope have we got? I mean, you've got to hope it's fair and balanced, but again, I'm not going to make any bets on that one. Yeah, Trump's not, not silly, is he? He's in it to make sure that uh, you know, the American people and the, get the best deal out of that. Um, I, don't think he's there. I don't think he sees Britain as a charity case. I, just, I think he sees us as a key ally, but uh, Trump's got America at, at heart and uh, fair play to him. I think we need Theresa to, uh, to make sure that she equally stands up to him and get, gets a deal that's good for Britain too. I think that um, the US and the UK will both benefit from it. And I think hopefully the EU sees sense and they will actually join in the collaboration and, and, and globally everyone will benefit. Well, I would think that if he wanted to deal with us, he would benefit the most. But that doesn't mean we can't get something from it. Uh, well, Trump's whole philosophy has been America first. So if he's entering into a deal with anyone, um, his best interests will be served, I think. Well, if you believe his rhetoric, it's America first, so it will benefit America the most. Well, what concerns me about something, when he says something like that, I think it more, he's more concerned about what it would do for him personally, financially. He's a pretty greedy man, and he's proved that in his business history in America. He's not very honest, and I, I don't like anything he's doing right now. Donald Trump is prone to using uh, grand words like fantastic, like terrific, like great. And those words don't really mean anything in the real world. They might look good on his Twitter account. They might sound good if, if he's given a rally. But when it comes down to the reality of politics, the reality of economics, it's not as simple as that. Yes, it's important for Britain in a post-Brexit world uh, to find new uh, trade deals with the big countries in the world, not the small economies, but the, with the big economies. So, for example, America, for example, Canada, uh, for example, China and, uh, and India. And it is very, very important that the British government go into those talks, ensuring that the other countries do not have an advantage because there are some countries in the world who consider Britain at the moment to be almost like a beggar. They are desperate for new trade deals. And what can that mean in business? It means that the other party can gain a more advantageous trade deal over Britain. So that's something that Theresa May needs to be very, very careful about. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure, um, the US, the Donald Trump is going to be his benefit from this because uh, he said clearly that in his immigration uh, speech that a phrase America is going to come in fair is coming first before everything else. Uh, um, as you know, uh, the um, British exports um, uh, to the Europe, European Union have about 290 billion a year uh, for services and trading. And uh, I think Theresa May needs to find somewhere else. And uh, there is no many um, much uh, difference actually in terms of coming from uh, out of the Euro European Union and going to the U.S. But yes, um, the deal is going to, uh, basically about goods and services and also probably about um, arms manufacturing, um, um, but basically uh, about uh, uh, services, goods and services. Donald Trump has stated countries want their own identity and the UK wanted its own identity. But I do think if they hadn't been forced to take in all of the refugees, then you wouldn't have a Brexit. Now he's talking about a trade deal with the UK. Is Theresa May now basing her Brexit strategy on a good deal with the US? 
thanks to President Trump. Various political parties, a union and pressure groups fear Mrs May's Brexit strategy would shift the UK from reliance on the EU to reliance on America and Mr Trump. And they question if this really is the safest way to proceed.